People slam Selena Gomez as tone deaf for this now deleted Instagram post amid actors' strike. Selena Gomez has come under fire for a now deleted Instagram post that violated the rules of the ongoing actors' strike, leading some to label her as tone deaf and careless. It's no secret that Gomes, 31, has a huge following as the third most followed person on the social media platform. The single soon singer made an inadvertent error when she shared a black and white photo from the set of the her hit Hulu show Only Murders in the Building. She stars in the series alongside Steve Martin and Martin Short. Gomes wrote in her caption, Missing and waiting at Only Murder Shulu. This post broke Sage AFTRA's rules that prohibit members from participating in or promoting any productions made under a Sage AFTRA agreement, including sitting down for interviews, uploading content and attending events such as premieres, festivals, awards, shows, and conventions. Columbia, US, Ohio. The wording of a proposed constitutional amendment on Ohio's full ballot to ensure abortion rights seems straightforward. It would enshrine the right to make and carry out one's own reproductive decisions. Yet as the campaigning for and against the nation's latest tug of war over abortion begins in earnest this weekend, voters are getting a different message from the measure's opponents. They are characterizing it as threatening a wide range of parental rights. As parents, it's our worst nightmare. One particularly ominous online ad funded by Protect Women Ohio, the opposition campaign, says of November's issue 1. That ad suggests the amendment would let minors end pregnancies without parental permission, calling it a potential reality so grim it's hard to even imagine. Another suggests parents would have no say in minors' sex change surgery. It's no surprise that anti-abortion groups opposed to the amendment are promoting that message. They are trying to flip the script in how they talk to voters after a string of losses in statewide ballot fights since the U.S. Supreme Court ended a nationwide right to abortion last year. Measures protecting access to abortion have succeeded in Democratic and Republican-leaning states, including California, Kansas, Kentucky, Michigan, Montana, and Vermont. Data collected last year by AP VoteCast, a broad survey of the electorate, showed that 59% of Ohio voters believe abortion should generally be legal. Just last month, Ohio voters soundly defeated a measure that GOP lawmakers placed on a special election ballot that would have raised the threshold to pass constitutional amendments to 60%, a proposal seen as a first step to defeating the abortion amendment. Before what is expected to be the highest profile national issue in November's elections, Ohio also is serving as a testing ground for political messaging headed into next year's presidential race. Abortion rights groups are trying to qualify initiatives in more states in 2024, potentially including the perennial battleground of Arizona. To try to reverse their string of losses, anti-abortion groups are using the Ohio campaign to test arguments over parental rights and gender-related health care as potentially a winning counterpunch. It's clear that the misinformation about abortion is not winning, said Elizabeth Smith, Director of State Policy and Advocacy at the Center for Reproductive Rights. It didn't win in Michigan. It didn't win in Vermont. It didn't win in Kansas. It didn't win in Kentucky. So instead, we are seeing anti-abortion factions in search for that new, winning talking point. Legal experts disagree over what effect, if any, the Ohio Amendment would have on parents' ability to control their children's access to abortion and gender-related health care, including surgery. The points of contention are in the measure's fine print where the amendment says every individual has a right to make and carry out one's own reproductive decisions. Opponents focus on the words individual and reproductive as potential openings. Meg Cook, a Republican lawyer working with Protect Women Ohio, said the amendment's authors were intentionally vague when they used the word individual, allowing it to apply to any gender and to both adults and children. This is very deliberate. I don't think it's open to interpretation, she said. It's very clear an individual means both. Ohio already has a parental consent law governing minors' access to abortion. Cook said the amendment's wording means that would become unconstitutional, along with possible new laws aimed at restricting minors' access to gender-related health care. Tracy Thomas, a University of Akron law professor who directs the school's Center for Constitutional Law, was among several legal scholars who said that reading of the amendment is a stretch. It is a straw argument, a false argument that they're setting up, she said.